This podcast uh, is an introduction to thermochemical changes. And we start with uh, what is energy? Back in junior high, you probably remember uh, discussing energy. And the definition of energy is defined as the capacity to do work. So if you're moving something over a distance and applying a force, create heat, that's related to energy, and or generate electricity. All of those uh, define what energy is. Now we will look at the laws of thermodynamics to recall from science 10. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy is always conserved. It can change forms, but the energy must be conserved. The second law of thermodynamics says that with every energy change or conversion, energy is always lost as heat. Okay? That's the second law of thermodynamics. And finally, the energy um, systems we will be discussing are found within three types of systems. We call them open, closed, and isolated. Recall an open system is when you have an exchange of matter and energy, okay? like a cup of water. Okay, uh, matter can evaporate out, the water can evaporate, and energy can be transferred. A closed system is when only energy can be transferred. So if I put a lid on a cup, that's a closed system. And finally, an isolated system is neither, okay? Matter and energy cannot be exchanged at all. An example of that would be a thermos. So we will be referring to open, closed, and isolated systems uh, within this unit. Since energy uh, defined has, is the capacity to create electricity, it's interesting to consider how we create electricity, what energy forms we use in North America. Um, so in class, I asked you to sketch a graph of what, it, of how, of what forms of energy are used to create electricity in Canada, and then compare that to the United States. And recall in Canada, um, most of the electricity we get is sourced from hydropower, which is water. Um, using dammed uh, lakes to create electricity, and that's found in BC and Ontario primarily. Coal and natural gas and petroleum fossil fuels is just a, maybe a quarter of the electricity production in Canada. And then you can see nuclear power is coming from eastern Canada, and the renewables such, wind, such as wind is a small proportion. In the United States, we contrast that with uh, not hydroelectricity being the major, but coal. Okay, if you consider fossil fuel used to create electricity in the United States, it's taking up three quarters of their pie. Okay, that's coal and natural gas, a large chunk, almost a quarter, is coming from nuclear power, and their hydroelectric contribution is only at 7%. Okay, so creating electricity is a, is a huge uh, issue, and um, it's quite different if you compare in the two countries. So here are our sources of energy okay, that produce electricity for us. Um, if you take a look, we've got fossil fuels or chemical energies in the left. In the middle, we've got nuclear and solar. And then in the right, we have the renewables such as wind, hydroelectric, solar, and, and ocean power coming from waves. So if we're looking at um, defining them, the first one is chemical. Chemical energy, we're primarily talking about fossil fuels. But we could talk about biomass as well. Okay, and that's burning waste or garbage to produce electricity. Okay. Um, another main form of energy is nuclear. And our nuclear energy comes from uh, taking apart the atom. And the atoms that we tend to use in nuclear power plants are uranium and plutonium. Okay. Um, solar energy, well, we obviously get that from the sun. All right, um, but it also gives us wind energy because it is the convection currents uh, created by the uh, uneven heating on the surface of the earth that allows wind to form and we can make electricity from wind. Uh, geothermal is another form of energy we can use. It's not used much, but it has potential to, to uh, produce quite a bit. And geothermal comes from um, under the earth. And there's a lot of uh, heat uh, under the earth that can be used for uh, electricity generation or just heating your own houses with heat pumps. And finally, the last one here is hydroelectric. And again, that's coming from dams where we uh, take the potential energy uh, due to gravity from the water as it flows down and converts to kinetic energy, which eventually produces electricity. All right, so those are our main forms of uh, energy that creates electricity for us. 
All right, um, recalling from Science 10, you uh, studied how you calculate heat or Q if there is a change in temperature. And it's not a ton of energy, it's really, when you do the math, you're only usually considering in the, in the ones of kilojoules. And the formula, if you recall from Science 10, was mass, which is M times the specific heat capacity of the substance you're heating, which is the amount of energy required to change one gram, one degree Celsius, uh, one joule. And the change of temperature is obviously the difference from initial and final temperature in degrees Celsius. Recall that Q, which is energy, is really proportional or related to the kinetic energy of the molecules, which is just how fast the molecules are moving. So if they move faster, their temperature increases. Uh, the heating curve that you looked at from Science 10 looks like this. And if you look at the sections, uh, if we have a temperature change, for example, from here to here, if there is a temperature change, then the way we'd find that amount of energy is MC delta T. So we can see temperature changes here. We can see temperature changes here. The only thing that differences, for, uh, or the only difference between these two sections is the specific heat capacity, okay? The specific heat capacity of ice is only 2.00 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the specific heat capacity for water is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. So uh, if you're calculating energy, you just have to consider what is the substance and what is the specific heat capacity. So a question that we could try in class was if I gave you uh, 40 kilojoules of energy, so that's Q equals 40.0 kilojoules, and I heat it to 400, so I have 40 kilojoules of energy, and I have 400 mils of water. Well, if you're thinking about Q equals MC delta T, it doesn't seem to have volume, but with water, one thing we're gonna consider is that the density of water is one gram per mil. That means for every milliliter, that's equal to a gram. So in this case, if I have 400 milliliters, that's equal to 400 grams. So I know that mass is 400 grams. All right, I also know my initial temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. So the question is asking, what is the final temperature? Okay, I was having technical difficulty with the pen, so here we go, typed out. We know Q equals MC delta T, and so delta T must equal Q divided by MC. Our Q is 40 kilojoules divided by 400, still having technical difficulties, there we go, 400 grams times 4.19 joules uh, per gram degree Celsius equals 23.9 degrees Celsius. We know our final temperature must be our initial times 23.9, which is the change in temperature. So, yay, our final temperature is 33.9 degrees Celsius.